And, and I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Hurwitz. That's Utah County Attorney David Levitt upset with Fox 13 News for asking about allegations against him. Rather than answering our questions, Levitt held a news conference to announce he was the subject of a ritualistic child abuse investigation that would probably go away soon. But that hasn't gone away. Today, prosecutors talked about the case in court. Tonight, Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbetz joins us in studio with information about another suspect with ties to Levitt. Adam. Yeah, Bob Kelly, we want to be clear. We never named David Levitt or anyone else as a suspect, and neither did investigators tied to this case. Most agencies don't want to talk about it, but today in court, a judge asked many of the same questions we've been asking. And for that reason, we finally got a few more answers about the direction of this investigation. There is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked more than 10 years ago. It was dismissed. He says it was politically motivated, but even his own employees now say they disagree. I would take exception to the suggestion that this is politically motivated. This is about trying to do the right thing for the investigation. Even though Levitt has been the most vocal suspect, he is not the only one. Another figure accused of being part of the child's abuse was just in court today, trying to get his record expunged. This is his attorney. I think it may be politically motivated. Your Honor, this is the investigative file. So there is... Um, about a thousand pages of, of uh, information there. The Utah County Sheriff's Office has arrested its first suspect in a ritualistic child abuse investigation, but they think there will be more arrests. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbetz has been following this story all year. He joins us live in studio with this evening's update. Adam. Yeah, Bob, we have been accumulating information on this man, David Hamblin, since February. Today, the sheriff's office confirmed its investigation does not stop with his arrest. There are still multiple victims, multiple suspects. Each story is different, but the common thread is that the allegations are very disturbing. I mean, let's, let's look. The first time we heard David Hamblin's name was in 2012, charged with 18 felony counts of abuse against multiple family members. This video shows Provo police spending months conducting interviews. Then they recorded an undercover phone call where he confessed, I am sorry for you. I'm not saying somebody in my body didn't do it. The Utah County Attorney's Office dropped the charges. Do you think this time it will be different? I do think it will be different. Brett Bluth, another victim, says David Hamblin was his therapist, recommended to him by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to cure him of his homosexuality. Did you feel like being gay was a disease? Absolutely. Do you expect there will be additional arrests? Uh, we do at some point, yes. Yeah, this is, uh, it's very active. We have uh, victims we're still working with. And uh, so we anticipate that we'll, uh, we'll have other arrests uh, to make in this case. Would you mind riding in the back of a police car? Men and women allege David Hamblin used positions of power as a father, a therapist, a neighbor, and as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to ritualistically abuse children. He was arrested Wednesday morning, but investigators say he probably won't be the only one. I have nothing to hide. Until Hamblin's arrest, Fox 13 News chose not to identify any of the subjects of the investigation, but that did not stop Utah County Attorney David Levitt from outing himself as a suspect in June and describing his relationship with Hamblin. I prosecuted the therapist in Jueb County for poaching a deer. He poached a deer to use for ritualistic purposes. This therapist was my elders quorum president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was my neighbor. I had a family connection. During that same press conference, Levitt described his accuser as tragically mentally ill. She's one of the same women who accused Hamblin and others.
Shame on you for doing that. That's, it's uncalled for. He said tragically mentally ill woman five times. To attack their, their mental health status as a way to discredit them, and it was clear that that's what he was doing, and that's, that's just not okay. There, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked. But watch and listen. More than two years before that press conference, Levitt sat down for a different interview and was asked if he thought ritualistic sex abuse was real. He went on to describe Hamblin and his own accuser, calling her a victim. Do I think that occurs? Yeah, I think it occurs. I know some victims of it. Yeah, they, they, I know some victims of it. I, I was not in a position to prosecute it. Who was into Native American stuff had killed deer and get deer hearts and drink their blood and drink the deer's blood. At the time, Levitt was under investigation by Homeland Security. These clips are now evidence in that case. We want to warn you, some of them are very graphic. How do you train a dog to roll over when it's time to roll over? You know, you do it by giving a reward and repetition. If a man wants to program some little girl to give immoral sex anytime he wants to, you start young and give rewards. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, unfortunately, I, I've never, you know, it's the same way you help a child learn how to make their bed. Yesterday, after Hamblin's arrest, we asked David Levitt through his spokesperson for a comment. We were told, no, he does not comment on pending cases. Apparently, that did not stop him in June. Reporting in studio tonight, Adam Herbetz. Fox 18 News, Utah.